Hello everybody, it's Vertical Sandwich. Welcome back to Dragon Quest VIII. You can't just leave it, can you? You've got guts. I'll so give you this that. is the pre raptorn battle conversation I with Red. Ain't. Look, we've got to go and do this thing is all. I just thought I'd come and say hello before we had to go. <laughs> you think I don't know what you're doing? Old brains told me. You're gonna fight Rapthorn, ain't ya? Oh. Oh, right. So you know then. Sorry I should have said. I won't be sorry if we get rid of him. He's a pain in the neck as far as I'm concerned. But you lot, you're having a laugh, ain't ya? Yeah. You better take me flail of fury if you're gonna stand a chance. But I'm only lending it to ya. Once you're done, I want it back. I'll come looking for ya if you try and run off with it. Got it? Thanks. Don't you worry. I'll bring it back once we've done in that geezer. See ya. You take care, you hear? Yeah, that, this is... Part of my argument about, like, why it would be cool to see a sequel to this game is because you get to see Angus and Red end up together. It's kind of obvious. And we they would have to deal kind of with Hero and Medea being together. But, like, you'd also get a good chance to introduce, like, a love interest to Angelo. Uh, and one probably to Jessica. And a whole new adventure. I've been waiting for you, meddlesome fools. Your pitiful attempts to stop me have been in vain. Behold, I am the Lord of Darkness, Rapthorn. My resurrection to flesh has been a long and painful journey. I love, I love baby Rapthorn. What pitiful circumstances we have all had to endure along the way. But, humans, now I will unite us in happiness. From this moment, the world of light and the world of darkness will be as one. And this union shall herald the reign of a new ruler. Yeah, they could have made him more ridiculous. One almighty power to preside over all. The Lord of Darkness. Rapthorn. You will revere me. You will offer up your pitiful lives as a mark of your respect and adoration. Okay, first off, I was incredibly dumb in this fight. I completely took uh, Rapthorn for granted. I really just thought, like, we'll just come in here and beat him up a, a bunch. Uh, also, uh, this fight kind of messed up my Angelo free playthrough. Uh, in the fact that uh, I was forced at one point. Uh, well, I wasn't forced, but without even thinking about it, I uh, um, I can't remember the name of the spell. But, uh, oh, I used uh, Kerplunk with Yangus. And it uh, resurrects everybody. So it actually brought Angelo back to life during this fight. He doesn't even live through the turn that he comes back to life on, but he takes it. He takes an attack, and I guess you could argue that it affected the outcome of my fight against the boss. Um, I don't resurrect him afterwards. He also um, another problem with this was he uh uh beating Raptorn resurrects everybody with full health. So I had to kill off Angelo in the first fight after this, which was not a huge deal. Um, you know, it's it's not 
There have been a lot of points where the plot line automatically resurrected Angelo, and I just killed him in the first random battle after. So. That was not my issue with it. My issue with it was that, you know, I had to... Although, uh, again, and I'm, I'm not real sure how this is going to work, um, but part of the... Part of the issue with fighting the Raptorn in his final form is that you have to use, like, the Sage's Wand or whatever it is, the the Godbird Wand, or I don't, I don't know what it's called. I don't remember if it's called the Godbird Staff or something. Um, you have to use that with every character in your party all in one turn. I mean, it's, it, it's an idea that's meant to A, waste seven turns in the boss fight, and B... Um, make sure you're keeping all of your characters, like, alive, I think. Uh, so my issue with that is, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna keep Angelo alive for seven turns. Uh, and then, you know. Um, I'm hoping that, and I don't know, uh, yet, I haven't done it yet. I'm hoping the game just recognizes all of your living characters in one turn, doing it as, uh, an attack turn. Because that will work, that I can do. But I don't know. Oh, we'll make it work somehow. Somehow it'll work. I mean, even with Raptor doing multiple attacks turn, and some attacks hitting multiple people, I mean, it's still, mathematically, if I can stay alive long enough, I will be able to get hits off with Angelo before he dies. So, uh, what really broke this fight in Raptorn's favor, as far as for me, was his double attack, his double attack turns, and his ability to do desperate, desperate attacks that knock people down to points where they can be killed. Because at the point where I got, uh, the point where I use Kerplunk, um, everybody was dead but, but Yangus. I mean, he managed to just, like, knock out my hero. And I'm gonna sneeze. He managed to knock out my hero and then get, have Jessica down to just some nothing number and like the freeze attack killed her. Which is amazing because she has like the Saintus shield on, so like those attacks do like a third of the damage they would normally do. It's not. She's certainly out of the three people in my party. She's the best equipped to handle magical attacks. But. Yeah, I don't know if it's funnier that Raptorn's like a firefly. Or if it's just funnier that he speaks in that high squeaky voice. Like, which you can kind of tell. Like, in the conversations in, like, Marcello's head. Like, you can kind of hear that, that they're preparing for the high squeaky voice. Because the final form, of Raptor, final form of Raptor has a completely different... So at the end of the last video, by the way, I said that I thought uh, Angelo sounds like the uh, the voice of Eugene from Tangled. And it's cl clearly the, the dialogue line that they were saying where he's like, I won't let you die. And uh, the line I was thinking of was in Tangled where he says, uh, uh, he's like, if you do this, you will die. Um, that, that was what I was, in my head, what drew the similarities. However, uh, they're not the same person. I'm just saving you the, you know, the Googling that or whatever. Also, since I'm on a big Marvel movie kick, I just watched, like, like I said in the last video, I just watched The Avengers. So I'm watching, like, I, I watched Thor the other day. It was on FX. I DVR'd it. And so I'm watching Thor, and I'm not even thinking anything of, like, what's going on. I'm just watching a movie. It's, a, it's an alright movie. It's okay. It's not my favorite of the Marvel move, movies, like. Uh, and so then, like, I'm watching uh, The Dark World. I'm watching the sequel, Thor, and I'm thinking to myself, as it's being narrated, I'm thinking, like, the biggest crime about this movie is that they didn't get, like, Anthony Hopkins to play Odin. And then I'm watching it, and like, I get, I get right, like, I get five minutes into it or something, and like, I'm watching Odin, 
and I go, wait a minute, that is Anthony Hopkins. It's completely Anthony Hopkins. It's very obviously Anthony Hopkins. I don't understand how I watched the entire first movie without realizing it was Anthony Hopkins. It's like when I watched the entire Adam Family movie without realizing that the Uncle Fester character was uh, Christopher Lloyd. I like got it right at the end, was just like, oh my god, that's Christopher Lloyd. I'm trying to think of what else. Captain America was on uh, FX yesterday too, and I TVR didn't watch it. That's why I'm on this big kick. Is that like I'm leading up to all these things I didn't watch? Because like once you miss one of those, it's just like, oh, I don't want to watch the Avengers until I watch Thor, and I don't want to watch blah 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 until I've watched blah blah blah. Um. So yeah. So, anywho, let's see what else do I have to say about Marvel movies or something. I can't really think of anything to tell you the honest truth of, like, Marvel movies and stuff. I haven't watched any of the Spider-Man reboots or anything. Or any of the new Spider-Man movies. Alright, okay, so we went through those movies. I'm not really, I'm not paying much attention to the fight. I know it was a disaster. So yeah, I mean, the final fight against Raptor is going to be uh, interesting, if nothing else. Oh, I also have, like, at some point, I have, like, four or five X-Men movies to watch. I don't know. I watched the, the, the three that were just, like, X-Men, X-Men 1, and X-Men 2. Or X-Men, X-Men, X-Men 2, and X-Men 3. But, like, I never watched any, like, the origin stuff I didn't watch. Like, and now, uh, Days of Future Past looks really cool. This is really dating this video. Two years from now, people are going to be watching this going, like, he's talking about movies that, like, have been out for five years. Yeah, I mean, it's just his desperate attacks, especially on Jessica, are just vicious. And the problem, too, is, it, it, like, in this setup, without Angelo, if I lose Jessica, she's my she's my guaranteed resurrector. She's the only person who has Kazing. So, I mean, our hero has Zing, but that's a chance. It's a dicey, it's a dicey spell. And my hero, by default, then, is my only hero. Or, uh, my hero, by default, is my only healer. Like, because he has Omni Heal. So this is what happened. Like, so now I can't heal, and I can't zing, and I've got just Yangus, and, ugh. And Yangus has a lot of magic points. It's not like I could have been using mid-heal or something, I guess. Or I would have been smarter to give him the sage to And the deep sleep thing is nasty. Ah. Oh, another thing I was gonna say, cause like I like I said, FX just had Captain America, and I just watched it like uh, a little while ago, and like I was really, uh, I'm always pleasantly surprised to see Hugo weaving, cause like that guy is just that guy must have the best agent in Hollywood, like seriously, I, just, I like cause he's he's in the he's in all three Matrix movies, like as uh, you know Agent Smith. And he, uh, he's V from V for Vendetta. And then he's in uh, the Lord of the Rings movies. And like, and then he's in Captain America. Just, uh, whoever. I mean, his agent, seriously, just like, I got another huge check for you. Super successful franchise we're putting you in. So, yeah. So, we did Kerplunk here. And this was my unexpected thing where I was just like, what the... Oh, yeah, and I didn't realize it until I casted it. And it, like, it was like, oh, yeah, now he'll... And wonderfully, he targets Angela. 
So that's like Angela's little moment alive. Yeah. And like, God, here was the thing, because I thought about at this point, I hadn't saved in a really long time. And that had something to do with it. I thought about refighting the fight. And then I realized that uh, I don't think... My issue with that is that uh, without Angelo coming back to life, I still could have won this fight. Like, I don't think if that attack had hit Jessica, I don't really think it would have made a, a, a world of difference. That's my argument, and I'm sticking to it. Now, if there were any doubt, if I had doubt that I that it really affected the outcome in a way, like, that I couldn't have... There was no possible way I could have beat this fight without Angelo for one turn. Uh, well, then I would be leveling up and trying again and doing other recordings. But we're not doing it. And how Jessica survived that little shot of everything. And it's kind of cheap that you can uh, kerplunk uh, Yangus and then bring him back to life. But you can. So if all your characters knew Kerplunk, could you just do like an infinite stream? Like, Kerplunking to resurrect everybody, giving them more magic points and casting Kerplunk again? Because I think Kerplunk uses all your magic points. Or maybe it's programmed, you can only do it. Like, once you can't be resurrected. I don't know, I because uh, clearly you can resurrect people. It makes me wonder about those things in the dragon graveyard that, resur like, that, that cast Kerplunk. Like whether or not you, if you have three of them in a fight, one of them casts Kerplunk. Will the next Kerplunk resurrect the first Kerplunker? It's a fun word to say anyway. So yeah, this battle should not have taken this long. It should not have been if I had come out just swinging. If I had set up a strategy where I had a dedicated healer and then like a support spell attacker slash, you know. And then uh, just a person always attacking would probably be Yangus. Um, or, or Jessica. Th I could have made this work. Like, it would have been a lot more efficient. It would have been a lot quicker. But unfortunately, that wasn't the strategy I went with. I really thought that I could come in, just like, psych everybody up and just tear him to pieces. Which is a lot the way, like, the ruin enemy on your way out of here. Like, that thing lasts three attack rounds. I mean, I just... It lasts more than that, but it's... I, Jessica takes off half its hit points in one attack. Because that thing doesn't have a way of vice to take away your statuses. Like, all it can do is beat you up. It has a physical attack, and that's it. Alright, and none of that stuff matters. You can wave vice all he wants. At this point in the fight, I was really thankful for the wave of vices, because they just were not a desperate attack. We're gonna get him here pretty quick. I mean, this video is less, there's less than a minute left in the video. And then when we do, we'll have uh, the statue fight. I did something a little fun with that. I actually was kind of proud of myself. For, it wasn't on purpose, it, I was just having fun. And then decided I was gonna do what I did. So, uh, when we come back, we'll be showing the statue fight and the ruin fight, I think. And uh, some associated cutscenes, but other than that, um, I will see you guys for uh, what happens after this. Bye, everybody.